Hey guys, have you heard of Cardinal Pizza Bella? Cardinal Pizza Bella recently made headlines for statements he made in an interview. Here's the backstory. Uh, he's the patriarch of the area of Jerusalem and Hezbollah captured 199 people, some of them including children, and have taken them hostage. And Hezbollah has threatened to kill a hostage for every time Israel targets a civilian in Gaza. And so Cardinal Pizzabella really recently had um, an interview where he revealed that he would be willing to exchange his life himself for an exchange for the release of the hostages. The Cardinal says, am I ready for an exchange? Anything, if it can lead to freedom and bring those children home, no problem. There is an absolute availability on my part. And when I read this, I thought, man, this is a selfless man. Willing to lay down his life for those who he's put, been put in charge of protecting. That is fatherhood. A man who's willing to give up his life for the sake of those who are in his care. And this is what's missing in society. This is what's missing in the church. It's missing. Men who stand up and say, Take me instead. As a father, how do I extend protection to my children? Well, one way is to protect them from error and then affirm them in the truth. And why is this so important? Well, because ideas have consequences. And if they get the wrong ideas, they're going to live a wrong life as we think our life will go. And so I want to affirm my children in the truth, protect them from error. And sometimes that, mean, that means making difficult decisions for our family that has a cost. Perhaps we fall out of favor in some people's eyes. Our relationships are strained because we want to live according to the truths of the Catholic faith. Sometimes relationships get strained. But that's the cost I'm willing to pay as a father for the sake of the salvation of my children. Now, when it comes to priests, when it comes to bishops, with cardinals, the Pope, we pray for them so that they're willing to pay the cost to protect their children from error and affirm them in the truth. Why? Because eternal salvation is at stake. And we need good fathers. When the father falls, the family goes with him. And think about what this does to those who are in our care when a man steps up and says, I'm going to sacrifice, I'm going to lay down my life for your sake. I, I just think, just last night, in my household here uh, we just moved we're on our acreage and uh, behind our house there's a bunch of trees it's a little wooded area and there were some coyotes there a pack right behind our house in the trees you couldn't quite see them about 10 o'clock at night and they were fighting <laughs> they're making all this noise I've never heard something so loud and it kind of sounded a little bit scary I suppose well, it woke up one of my daughters. She's six years old. She comes to me and she says, Daddy, I'm scared. I can hear the coyotes. I'm scared that they're going to come and attack us. I said, sweetie, they're little things. They're not going to hurt you. And secondly, I'm here to protect you. And she said, okay. And she went back to sleep. <laughs> it filled her little heart with great peace knowing that her daddy was there to protect her. Question, who are the shepherds that are actively protecting their flock from the devil's deception? Matthew seven fifteen. beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. And I can't help but think of how Cardinal Pizzabellas have his effect on his own people. When he's publicly stated take my life in exchange for those innocent children. Isn't that what we want to hear from our bishops and our cardinals and our priests or see that in some way? Even as fathers, fathers of our own household. But I think that men struggle to do this, to lay down their life in service for those who've been placed in their care, to be their protector I think men struggle with this and more than women. 
And the reason why I say this if we, is if we rewind all the way back to Genesis, where Eve is tempted by the serpent. She takes and eats and she hands the fruit to Adam and they fall. Now, what's significant about this? Well, when we think about the serpent, we think about a little itsy bitsy little snake. But if you go back to the original ancient Hebrew text, the word serpent there, the word is Nahash. And that doesn't describe a little itsy bitsy little snake at all. According to St. Paul's Center for Biblical Theology, they say, they say this, I think it's excellent. Throughout the Old Testament, Nahash is referred to powerful, even gigantic evil creatures. Isaiah calls Nahash a sea dragon, the great Leviathan. Job also uses Nahash to depict terrible sea monsters. So why is Adam not protecting Eve? Why is he not being her protector? Because he's scared. I think he's in self-preservation mode. And as a result, he says nothing when his bride is threatened. And so the serpent, that dragon, that evil entity goes to Eve. And she is deceived because Adam didn't do his job. He wasn't willing to lay down his life for his bride. And ever since then, I think men, more than women, struggle with this. They, we struggle more with selfishness and the fear of suffering for the sake of the beloved. And so Cardinal Pizzabella, by God's grace, has risen above this and given us a wonderful example of how men should act. And I praise God for his example and what he has said. He has also said that we have to pray today for peace, but he didn't just say for just to pray. He said to pray and fast. And that takes us back to what we talked about last week. If you remember last week, I said, prayer is not enough. We have to sacrifice. We have to fast. And Cardinal Pizzabella re-emphasizes this and calls everyone to join in prayer and fasting for peace in that area of the world. Now, why prayer and fasting? I'd like to remind you of Matthew 17. If you recall, and that's part of the scriptures, the apostles are trying to cast a demon out of somebody and the demon just won't go. Don't you hate that when that happens? <laughs> the demon won't go. Others have gone, but this one won't go. How come? This one's a little different. So they go to Jesus and ask him privately, why couldn't we cast this demon out? And what does Jesus say? Basically says this kind cannot go out except through prayer and fasting. What's the lesson for us? There's certain mountains in our life that will not move. There's certain demons that influence our life that will not leave until we both pray and fast. So friends, today let's pray and fast for peace where war has broken out. And take this lesson too and pray and fast for your families. I would challenge the men who are watching this. Are you praying and fasting for your families? Are you praying and fasting for your children? Men, you should be. That's your job because if you don't do it, who's going to do it? So friends, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. Also, please comment below. I love learning from you. I will read every one of your comments. I don't necessarily respond to all of them, but I appreciate that you give the time to watch these videos. God bless you.